Good evening, and welcome to the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, September 21st, 2014. The market has managed to make it through the second to last FOMC meeting before the official end of QE3, uh, relatively unscathed. That was on Wednesday here in the middle, and it took us right to the prior all-time high uh, in the markets. And then uh, Thursday, Friday, Friday's action really is what took us up and over. So S&P is at new all-time highs, but I think that what's important here is that it may be working itself into an ascending wedge, um, which could be uh, problematic. Uh, if I take uh, just a simple trend tool like this, I use like what we call the swing out method and we swing out to here, you can note that Friday's top on a gap up was very, very close to this line here that connects. And then here, because the trend is very steep, we can draw another line here. When I say very steep, I mean this action here is, uh, is very steep, right? If you go straight up here, it's kind of straight up. And um, all this together forms this, these two lines together is, is known, is what is known, excuse me, as an ascending wedge. And an ascending wedge can be bearish if, uh, if the two lines here continue to get closer and closer and tighten. Very often it's very difficult for the market to break out out of this pattern. Now, what would invalidate that is if on, say, Monday or Tuesday, we didn't come down at all. We just went up and over and we basically, you know, we're here. And then if that's the case, then we have to assume that the resistance in the market is really going to be here. And that could be the end of the party here at the 2050 to 2060 range. So we'll see what happens there. But I'm going to keep a close eye on this wedge pattern. And there may actually be a short um, short opportunity here, you know, if, if we were to snap out of this to the downside. So I would begin to caution longs a little bit here. Uh, usually, you know, that's been my kind of bias for a long time is cautiously long, but now I'm actually a little bit more cautious and I would like to flip to bearish a bit if I saw that pattern coming up. It's, it's a relatively high probability pattern. But as I was saying, of course, if we close above the upper line and have some daily closes uh, up in here, then it's probably no dice is probably um, not happening. Uh, rest of the majors are about the same. I don't want to spend too much time on them, except that the Dow does have a very large topping tail to uh, overcome. That's a really big tail. The Dow was really strong over the last four or five days, and that was a big topping tail here. Um, you can probably see this clearer on the diamonds. As you can see, it only looks that way on the Dow. The Dow on the diamonds, it's more of a um, uh, dark cloud cover of sorts. And this is really how things open. Usually the, in, the indices, I probably shouldn't even show you the, uh, the index charts because when you look at the index chart, it would imply that it opened there, but the, the index charts never really show you the gap properly. So you want to go to the ETF and see what that looks like. So you look at diamonds, you look at spider, and there you can see like, you know, how the spy looks. Um, and QQQs, NASDAQ, again, basically a lot of them like dark cloud cover. I don't really think that's an overly uh, bearish pattern. And of course, Russell is just a mess. It's just really going nowhere. Uh, I tried to get an iron butterfly off in the IWM on Twitter before the close on Friday. I didn't get filled. I was looking for like 83 cents for like the one four, wrapped around the 114 strike basically uh, inside of here with, uh, with cover of wing, you know, the wings here at like 115 and 113 for like 83 cents. That would have been like 17 cent risk, betting that the Russell wouldn't really go anywhere in seven days, but I did not get filled. Some people on Twitter were able to hit it for like 82 or 83 cents, but I didn't get filled. But um, that just gives you, that just tells you basically how neutral I am about the Russell, because obviously if I, was, if I wasn't neutral, I wouldn't be trying a, an iron butterfly, which is really a, basically a neutral premium collection type strategy. So let's take a look at market profile, if we could for a moment. And here it is here. And basically the big question is, did we get any excess on Friday? I would say yes. I'd say, I think it's a little bit. I mean, you've got single prints here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I guess, right? Three, four, five, six. Yeah, about eight or nine prints here. Um, it does thin out up near the top. But remember, we opened this market here. And it was really just like a gap and fail to the downside. And remember that the highest point that the futures have ever been is still in an overnight session. And as we always say, the high is probably not going to be made in the overnight session. It's probably not the end of the move. It could be, but it's not. We talked a lot about 
poor highs in this profile, in this huge distribution. Be aware that those have now been repaired. There's a poor high. There's another poor high. There's another poor high. This high is rather poor. This high is, is rather poor. All of these have now been repaired, basically, all these poor highs by this action here, and value has definitely established much higher, correct? Because you've got here, breakaway, and then here, value did go higher, but it is overlapping to up. So this is also just information to carry forward that it's not as bullish. When it's overlapping like this, it's not as bullish. When it's more breakaway like this one, it is more bullish because the value separates away and, and establishes clearly higher as opposed to just overlapping to higher. So in the days to come, what I'm going to be looking for is basically to see if this pattern turns into a swing high and then you might get a couple days down. So what I mean by a swing high is simply that uh, since this is a high here and this is a higher high here somewhere, there would have to be a lower high and maybe established value looking like that, and then you could get a little bit of, of this action. So we'll see. So that's the situation with the profile for the coming week. All right, let's get into some trade ideas here. I just have a couple of things to talk about. The dollar short that I've been waiting for, looks like it's finally coming into fruition. The dollar is just absolutely on a tear. Remember, you have to go out to the weekly to see the pattern here. And what I'm looking for is a dollar short Basically, at this point, I'm really thinking of the upper trend line, not even this earlier one. Um, I, it, I almost feel like I'm, you know, I don't want to even short it here. I haven't put anything on yet, but I think that one is going to be a little bit too short and I, too close. I think I think we're going to blow through it. So I think really it's going to be here, um, up here. So basically, a little bit closer to the 86 level is where I think the dollar is going to stall. And I'm using a weekly time frame on this. I'm using these weekly bars. And my target would really be probably to about at least 84. I mean, look at where the 20 period moving average on the weekly is. It's down here at 81. I mean, this is so overextended, it's not funny. The dollar's just on a tear. So we would be looking for that. And then I'm also looking for a bond trade to the short side. Bonds have just gotten decimated. If you recall, I got stopped out on a long right in here for a quickie. If, you're, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll notice that I had uh, I had the trend line buy right here, pretty much right on it, like just below the 137. Uh, I was stopped out for a small loss, I think about five or six ticks, bonds crashed lower. But look what's happening now. They're rallying back, and where are they going to go? I think they're going to go right to the back side of the trend line and then die. I think they're going to go to just over 137 right here, and they're going to fall back. This is a good area to initiate a short because not only will you have the back side of the trend line, uh, but you've got the declining 20 period moving average, which should knock them down. And then little by little, this trend line is working its way lower. So at some point here, I think they're a short, they hit here and they roll over and then you see bonds lower. Um, in individual stocks, in, as far as the Jumbotrons are concerned, uh, I want to point out to you that Netflix is showing a lot of relative weakness, I think. Uh, let me remove that drawing. Notice this pattern here in Netflix where you had a break of the uptrend line and now you had this very weak retracement to the upside. It's you know in the face of what the market has done, right? If you compare this to what the S&P has done, this is just so weak, it's not even moving. And you've got a, basically a very clear uh, uptrend line, which if it's violated, I think it sends Netflix a bit lower, maybe down to this support point here. So that's got a ways to travel. Um, Priceline has been very good to me this week. Um, I just happened to have a couple of big trades in a row. On Priceline, on the equity side, um, I still like the, um, the ratio spreads all the time in here. The one that I showed you last week, that worked out well. I was able to get off um, portions of that for like good gain. Um, I think Priceline is a similar situation to really the bond setup, if you look at it. I mean, look at how it's broken trend here, and now you have this reversal coming back up. But again, look at all this resistance here at 1220 where the uh, declining trend line comes down. You've got a uh, 200 period moving average here, right? And you've got the 20 bending over and coming down right to it. So if price line, it all, I mean, you know, it already, already you can see that there, I think there was a lot of relative weakness on Friday because the stock closed, you know, pretty much at the lows, whereas you had the broad market rally a bit off the lows, right? You had really a big rally in the S&Ps off the lows but Priceline didn't participate in that at all. So we're kind of going to be taking a bearish stance on Priceline for trades in the coming week. Uh, let's get another one up here. Tesla, they got a bit 
knocked down this week. And what I'm gonna be looking at in Tesla is this support point here at 230 for a long and also some ratio spreads. If I could get them off at a better price, I like the 230 support. So if you look at Tesla, for instance, like right now, the 235, 230, is only trading for a seven cent credit and that's five dollars wide so you'd be playing for the stock when you have a small credit like that you're playing for the stock to move down in here i think that could be a play but i'm not really interested in collecting a seven cent credit and i'm i don't think the stock comes down here in one week it might so better bet would be if the stock started to really tank then you put on that trade because what's going to happen is you're going to put on this trade for a very large credit it's going to be like a you know 25 to 50 cent credit and it could be more worth it and then of course if the stock does come all the way down then i think it's a long on the trend line because you know that's pretty much my mo i like the trend lines i like basically horizontal lines diagonal lines and that's about it I'm, i keep it kind of simple all right last but not least let's talk about baba bravo alpha bravo alpha the alibaba group interesting chart isn't it because it's just one day there's only one day of chart here. That's it. That's all you got. Baba's only traded one day. It IPO'd on Friday. Uh, I had a decent scalp for a little bit of money on Friday that I tweeted uh, after. That wasn't bad. But really, the play in Baba was short. The stock was actually down like for most of the day. There was long opportunity in here. I guess there was some long opportunity in here and in here, but I didn't trade it after that. But the stock was just mostly down all day. As I've always said about these IPOs, uh, what I really like about them is if they just go down a number of days in a row, maybe five to seven or even more, then I think there is opportunity to purchase them as they either break their downtrend line or cross above the high. So in BABA, the, what, what you want to look for is this here. And you can see that's the reason why I have an alert set at 97.70. Uh, for here because I want to know when the stock crosses back over, over its all-time high and if it does that then it is a buy for a longer term for a swing all right that's it for this week on behalf of myself and the entire shadow trader team here in beautiful Philadelphia Pennsylvania I wish you good trading and good night